Sooner service with the squad. Um, super excited. We love animals, don't we? Yeah. We're with yeah. the weatherman. We're with the, the major key alert. So we're here, we're doing our thing. Reestablishing OUDNA every day. First day, man, let's get it. With my family, with my brother, OUDNA, 10 toes down. Well, my first game here kind of embarks on my new journey. Championship level in everything that we do. That's what OUDNA is. Oh, Lord, Lord. Uh, well, yeah, we're, today we're um, painting the fence of a single mother and put together a play set for her and her children in the backyard. We're spread out through the community, competing with one another. We got eight different teams that uh, are doing a variety of different uh, projects for a bunch of different groups that need some help, need some volunteer work. So. As we say all the time, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. And uh, so there's an opportunity for us to, to, to give back and to serve others, help where, where it's needed. You know, for us, we call that keeping the main thing the main thing. I'm building the playground. Right, what's his name? Hey, where's my Bob the Builder. <laughs> we got green beans, we got peas, we got corn. <laughs> Just one, though. Can somebody take this picture? Oklahoma football meals on wheels. Meals on wheels. Curtis Lofton, man, how are you? Nice to meet you, sir. General. General, good one, man. Yes, sir. How you doing? What are you doing? Good. Mr. Charles, did you serve in the military? Yeah, I was in the Marines. Thank you for your service. Thank you so much. I just got the camera. Man, you know, man, we up here at the Buddy Bench Building Program. You know, we building, building benches, you know, for Norman, Oklahoma. Come on, come on. Come on, buddy, come on. You know, it, it means a lot. You know, we, we don't realize how blessed we are. And we don't realize, you know, how many other people are going through unfortunate times. So to be able to, you know, put some of our, you know, able bodies to work, it just means a lot to be able to give back to the community, man. Hey, I'm Brent. Brent, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. All right, we're not finished. Okay, we're not finished, so. Come on. How are you? Good. Thank you, man. Nice to you. Nice to meet you. Need it. Can't be ball 24 7, and these young guys are going to be finished playing very soon. And so, important that they again learn the value of what it's like to help people in need and take time to, you know, have the proper balance and vision for, you know, what living a fulfilling, you know, significant life looks like. We learn it as we go. But all I'm thinking right now is feeling everything. I'm doing the, I'm doing the D-line. Isn't that what it is here? You, you swipe, right? Swipe, boom, boom. That's what I'm talking about. Or, right? Yeah. Both hands? Why you gonna, you ain't gotta go back Cause you that flip far. your hips. Right, but do it again. What do you mean? Go all the way down. Look, go, go. Uh, I'm Robert Fulton. I'm Associate Athletic Director for Athletic Medicine, Student Athlete Health and Wellness. I'm part of a team of athletic trainers, physical therapists, and physicians that work to support our athletes. Uh, with football, we have uh, five certified athletic trainers and one physical therapist that's dedicated specifically to football. We're very fortunate in Oklahoma to have the facilities, to have the resources that are available. Uh, the strength that we have is, is our resources. We have an x-ray unit here in our athletic training room. We have three exam rooms. We have hydrotherapy, uh, HydroWorks treadmill with the underwater treadmill that we can progress guys back onto the field. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have a physician that comes into our facility five days a week to hold clinic to see our athletes. We try to keep everything internally 
to operate as complete and as efficient as possible. Bro, it goes over water. I know. I've it goes seen over it. water. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know this was for the video. I'm out here getting my feet taken, getting ready for a working man Wednesday. <laughs> Here's how the trilogy went, okay? You had a racing movie. Then you had a, a, a multi-continental spy thriller That's starring... Three. That was two. That's two. Starring three. Mater. Three is then the three is about racing. That's the most. Bro, all right. Wait, what happened to... What happened to what? Like the big one. I don't no, it was... But so, yeah, we just had the space. Okay, so, we can start over there. We got the Batmobile from the Christopher Nolan Batman films. Okay, and then uh, you have a little Harry Potter set that you built. There. I bought that one. Yeah. She, yeah, and then we have uh, two Corvette Stingrays right here. Okay, so boom. And the very first one we built was the Tie Fighter. That was for my birthday. Um, That's how this whole thing started. Yeah, this is how this entire thing started. Uh, then over here you have you have Vader, you got Luke. This is their uh, their starship from the from Episode Six, uh, where they escort each other, or what Vader escorts Luke in to get back to. The Death Star, two. Then you have the original Batmobile. It's probably one of my favorite pieces ever uh, from the 1960s TV show. We finished it off with a Ferrari right here. It was our last one. Lego Fridays. Yeah, Lego Fridays. Fridays. Lego Fridays every Friday, every Friday in the summer. Again, if you want to do a documentary on it, Lego Fridays. feel free. Summer workouts, come see us. We'll be in here. That's Build where all these are made. Build we still Legos. got a lot of space to fill, so I mean, yeah, I'm not Yeah, we have a whole not. space. So empty. It is a family. We spend more time with these guys around these coaches, these athletes, those types of things that uh, really develop bonds and close relationships that last a lifetime. And and for us to be able to help, to be a part of the program, to be a part of uh, seeing the success of these athletes' lives and and the wins that they have on the field, it it really means a lot. But ultimately, we all get into this, the hours, the time, the commitment, the time away from our families, the relationships that we have with our athletes. Yes, sir. So you tell me I should get medium rare? Uh, just to say anything. Anything, anything above medium should I be know. considered a sin. You don't have to go with that strip. I'm go ahead and throw that thing oh, yeah. with a little pepper. A pepper, pepper, pepper. pepper. Oh, I'm going to get mine. There you go, man. All right, bro. You got it. Those are mid rare. Almost rare. I don't want mine. Just don't get the top right. Process. It's been um, kind of slow, you know. When you just really want to get back out there and so things like that, you know, everything kind of slows down. You know, it's really more of a marathon, not a sprint. But uh, so far, the recovery process has been going great. You know, I'm just taking it time at a time, and then hopefully I'm able to get back out there as soon as possible. Yeah, it's basically just um, you know strengthening my whole foot, my ankle, getting um, all those muscles back to how they were before the injury. So basically, it's just helping me get ready for, you know, you gotta walk before you crawl. So basically, that's all the treadmill is doing. It's just helping me take my baby steps to get back into the field and eventually be running. Yeah, man, this is what I do every day. Just put the boot on, but just like that, strap it up. Pump that thing up just like that. A couple times. Boom. Lock it in place. Put your shoe back on. Now we get it back to roll. Here's what I do know too. The best players show up and play well. That's what happens. All right, the thinner the air gets, the steeper the climb gets, the best players show up and play well. Not perfect. They play well. I need Key Lawrence to play his best football this Saturday. Well, the margin of error is going to be small. We know that. That's good, too. I like pressure. I freaking love pressure. That brings the best or the worst out of people.
And you're going to find out who's doing what's what. That's what we're going to find out this Saturday. One step at a time. I just tell everybody in here, don't grow weary. We're back back here, Working Man Wednesday. And here in a few more weeks, we ain't going to have no more Working Man Wednesdays. Not for this season, not for Team 128, not for 2022. So make the most of it, man. Do what you can while you can, so that when you cannot, you won't wish that you would have when you could have. Do what you can while you can. So some of the things that we're looking at during practice is we're just watching some guys that were returning to play, kind of seeing how they're moving, see if they're capable to handle the position, the workload that they're doing. A lot of times if a guy's early back in rehab, we have percentages that they're allowed to get at through practice. So we're working with sports science, strength and conditioning, to make sure that they're hitting those numbers and they're not going above it, just so we can make sure that they're safely returning to play. Outside of that, we have Jeff Lau, who's our director of rehab, and he's controlling a lot of our on-field rehabs and does a great job with those guys and making sure that they're ready to go back into the practice activity that they're being held to. Yeah, during practice, if we have any injuries or anything that happens, our first immediate thing is to run out to our student athlete, check on them. Um, you know, depending on the joint or the body part that might be injured, we're checking to make sure that everything is in place. We're not worrying about anything, you know, being dislocated, fractured, torn, anything like that. So we're going to check to make sure everything's in place first. Then we'll do some range of motion testing, strength testing. Um, as long as those things check out and our athlete is able to continue safely and protect themselves and perform their jobs, then we can let them continue. Um, if we have any or any indication that they might be compromised or weak or at risk, then obviously we need to remove them from practice um, to protect them and keep them safe. So we, we also take care of hydration during practices. We got eight uh, student athletic training students that help us out with that. Uh, they kind of walk around with the position group we assign them with. Our goal is to make sure the athletes don't get thirsty. We're always forcing water down in their throats, making sure we're pushing water on them. They're not coming to us for water, especially as we move into colder months. You know, guys don't want to drink, so that's kind of where we got to be more forceful with the, the hydration standards. Bags of candy. All right, folks, you can break you down first, and then we got these bags right here from uh, uh, Josh. You got plenty more than that, right? Yeah, All right. Game. Tell them how much you love the costume and how scared you are. Kind of play the game with them a little bit. They are jacked. All right, to see you guys. All right. One, two, three. Playmakers. Yeah. Ow. <laughs>
show me Spider-Man folks. We have a lot of activities. We have oh, a yeah. 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 1047. That's my final guess. 57. Down your your left thumb. Before I heard that. Right there. Mm -hmm. Underneath there. Novelist. Director of rehabilitation here at Oklahoma. Um, but yeah, I grew up a Sooner. Uh, came coming to games and and uh, getting to be in this atmosphere was huge for me. Just trying a pretty rare opportunity to finally get out to a game. But uh, when my dad was able to take us, it was you know just special. And so it's still special to this day. Uh, being able to support this team, being able to be around the, a program like this and, and historic tradition program. Uh, my role here is to, to work on rehabilitation for sure. Like, you know, that's, that's the whole story. One, we try to work on helping guys stay on the field. Uh, so when they arrive, kind of assessing them, injury prevention. Uh, and then certainly um, once they unfortunately get injured or something does come up, how do we help them get back to it? And ideally, not only kind of to their prior level of function, but even enhanced from there. So that's sort of it in a nutshell. I want to be in your movie, dog. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I don't want to be on fun, folks. You the star today. I get it. I get it. But I think some of this stuff, if you work through it, it's not going to be that bad. The, probably the cliche answer commonly, you know, my parents always taught me to try to help somebody, and, and how do you how do you do something in, in life that's that's beneficial and in, in, in helping people, and, and so that's you always want to help people, but probably more on a on a internal level. There's a very very deep satisfaction in in seeing the the if you look back on it, you know this is where they started, this is where they are now. Um, and especially when you get an opportunity to work with somebody that is really highly motivated or the person that's really dejected and they and, and you take them and you help mold them and you help teach them and educate them and you're a part of a team, not only the athletic training staff but the, the sports medicine staff as a whole with the physicians um, as well as every other department, strength and conditioning and how do you meld that with coaches. Um, and it truly is a, it's a, a deep sense of, uh, of appreciation for what they're capable of doing. How did you help them get there? And where were you uh, as, a, as a role player on that journey to get back to what they want to do? And so you see that happiness and they finally do something that they couldn't do for a long time or they were struggling with. And I think that's a, that's a big part of it. You feel pretty good about what you're able to bring to the table when, when they're, they're returned to what they want to do. Acceleration, slow it down, just float. Acceleration again, yeah. work on that. Coming up a bye week, I'd probably say just having the same hunger that we did when we went 0-3 for those last three weeks that we had previously. Just keeping that same mentality, keeping that same bite down mentality, just trying to Keep chugging at the train, man. Just keep keep the wheels going, keep the train going. Well, coming to o Oklahoma, it's like just coming home to like your mom after you've been gone for like a couple months. You know how she just come and welcomes you at the door. But that's exactly how it is here, family oriented. This like, especially for me being from Tennessee, a long way from home, and um, I always needed that family feel. And if it's not like a family feel, it doesn't feel like home. Period. So it's just big for me because I'm missing that family aspect. And, um, and they do a lot of it, just like substituting themselves in, trying to be father figures for me. Uh, brothers, cousins, uncles, whatever you need them to be, they'll be there, especially having life happen. So, and they understand that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Of course, the season isn't going as we planned it to be, but just having the same bite down mentality and the same like, we need to understand we can always do, get better and do better than what we plan on doing. Uh, we might not be like number one defense in the country, but we can still thrive to be it. Understanding that we can't take this opportunity for granted. Like everyone wants to be in our position in our shoes, and we need to understand that this is something that everyone dreams about. So we just try to keep the main thing the main thing. Okay. Okay. 
today sooner nation the one and only bye week of this 2022 season has come and gone and today brent venable's team finds itself at the northernmost outpost of the big 12. the clones boast of the number one defense in the conference one of the best in the nation dylan gabriel and the sooners have their work cut out for them
the corner to the 40. Stops, 35, first down to the 30, and dances out of bounds. Gabriel throws near side for Rube, caught it, first down and out of bounds. The kick is away, bit of a yank to it, but it's through the uprights, and good. He's surrounded, throws late across the middle, broken up, James Davis. Pressure from deep, Deckers throws far sideline, the pass is high, and it's incomplete. Pass Deckers under pressure, they got him! Jordan Kelly flings him down. Gabriel, they do bring pressure, it's picked up, has a pocket, throws, he's got a wide open man! It's Farouk, and that's Painter! The middle, he's pushed backwards to Sean White again. Another tackle for Long. Can't stop me now. I'm just doing what I do. Won't stop doing what I do. Ain't afraid to bear my soul. Ain't afraid to bear my soul. Now he's surrounded. Throws late, deep down the middle. Intercepted. Intercepted. It's Justin Broyles. Another booming punt by Turk. It bounces at the three, goes sideways at the one. He keeps it in the field of play, and the Sooners grab it. Back to pass, Decker's gonna throw again across the middle. Intercepted, it's Dutchman. He's on the run, 25 to the 20. He might score to the 10, to the five, and he's out of bounds at the two. Snap, Gray, run to left, up the middle. He's to the goal line, and he's in. It's Oklahoma 27 and Iowa State 13. We came to Iowa and we did what he did. And now we go back. That's a tip piece, no problem. Next rep. Next rep. Next rep. Next rep. See y'all in North.